So today we will discuss about design of brakes, right? So uh, a brake is basically, you know, uh, it is defined as a mechanical device, right? Which we are using for absorbing the energy possessed by a moving system, right? Because we are uh, taking any particular uh, body which is in motion to rest with the help of brakes, right? So this is basically a mechanical device. Right? Which is absorbing energy, right? So it is or it absorbs the energy possessed by any moving body. we can say moving system or mechanism right by means of friction right so basically it will convert it to heat energy so uh, generally uh, three main types of brakes are in use as mechanical, hydraulic and electric, right? but we will focus on uh, this mechanical brakes. Yeah, right. So, and this uh, brakes capacity is also an important characteristic, right? Whenever we are designing any brake, its capacity is also uh, a, a parameter which we need to have idea about how it is uh, being decided. So basically, it depends on the unit pressure between braking surfaces, right? And area which is in contact is also. Uh, parameter which affects the brake capacity then radius of the brake drum as well as coefficient of friction so these are all the uh, uh, factors which are going to affect the brake capacity right now if we think about uh, the energy equations right then as we know that for linear motion as well as rotational motion we are having uh, this kinetic energy right in both the case is given by this equations respectively one half mv square as well as one half i omega square so as uh, brake is absorbing the energy of moving element then uh, the energy which is being absorbed by the brake can be given by uh, this uh, kinetic energy in case of this linear motion is one half m v1 square minus v2 square so v1 is the velocity uh, before uh, the application of brake and v2 is the uh, velocity after uh, the brake is applied right similarly uh, for rotational motion this energy which is going to be absorbed by brake will be one half i omega 1 square minus omega 2 square right so this is how energy will be absorbed by the braking element sometimes uh, it is uh, this uh, what we can say some potential energy also sometimes uh, may be the energy which is being absorbed by brake in case of hoists and all right what we are doing is we are absorbing the potential energy which is given by this mgh right so whatever energy we are uh, uh, we are transferring through brake is ultimately going to uh, convert it into that heat energy right and this uh, total energy is represented by this mt into theta where mt is the braking torque 
and theta is the angle turned right by the uh, that particular uh, drum while absorbing the energy right so this is how we are having uh, various uh, uh, energy right or uh, various energy transformations associated with the design of brakes right so with this simple understanding you can attempt uh, this question which says a solid cast iron disc 1 meter in diameter and 0.2 meter thick is used as a flywheel it is rotating at 350 rpm it is brought to rest in 1.5 second by means of a brake so calculate the energy absorbed by the brake and the torque capacity of the brake so you can try this question first you can note down this given data right that diameter is 1 meter then thickness is equal to 0.2 meter right then this rpm is given as 350 rpm and time is given as 1.5 second So what you need to calculate is energy absorbed by the brake and the torque capacity of brake. Uh, sorry. I first have to calculate the mass of the disc. Yes. Uh, yes. Density into volume. Correct. Because while calculating uh, this energy, you have to go then by no this no equation, no. right? mk square is nothing but that moment of inertia only so in order to have idea about the energy okay. absorbed you first have to have idea about this uh, mass as well as <coughs> radius of gyration omega 2 you can consider 0 right and <coughs> omega 1 you can calculate from the rpm 2 pi n by 60 2 pi n 1 by okay. 60 now in order to calculate mass so you have to have that uh, density right so density of cast iron is not mentioned here right so density you can take as 7200 kg per meter cube right so once you have this then uh, you can calculate the mass because you know the diameter you know the thickness right so volume will be pi by 4 d square into t and you have density also now so you can calculate mass yes correct yes sir. yeah and uh, here for the solid disk uh, that radius of gyration is uh, provided as d by root 8 right so your k square will be this d square by 8 and diameter is given as 1 so your k square will be 1 by 8 meter square so can anybody tell what is the mass sir 1130.97 kg 1130.97 ok so here yes sir yeah. Okay, okay, 1130, right, 0.97 kg. So, once you have all this, I guess you can calculate energy now, right? You just need to plug in all this data. You have mass, you have radius. 95,033. Sorry? Energy is coming 95 kilojoules, sir. Okay, but you should go by joule only. First, tell me what is this omega 1? 2 pi n1 by 60 
So once you have all this, then uh, keep it in joules only. This energy. Don't directly go for kilo joules. Then what will be your answer? Kilo joules. 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 Kilo Now what you need to do is you need to calculate the torque capacity, right? So in order to uh, have idea about the torque capacity, you know energy is equal to torque into the angle traversed, right? That theta which we have seen, E is equal to m t into theta. So now you have already calculated energy, right? You need to calculate theta first in order to have idea about the torque, right? So So theta is actually omega one plus omega two by two, right into this thickness. Right. So uh, with this you can calculate theta. Omega two is zero. Omega one you have already calculated. So, sir, uh, yes. sir, if we do it by angular acceleration, alpha, uh, I alpha, I alpha, but uh, we don't have alpha, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So for uh -huh. now, we need to go by this only. But yeah, we can. Ah, uh, we can calculate alpha as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Ah uh ha! -huh. If it is provided, you can go by that also. So what is theta? Twenty seven point four eight. Seven point four eight almost okay. So now you can calculate is this mt. What is? Excuse me, sir. What is t? T is thickness. Sorry, sorry. Uh, t is time. Sorry, t is time. So it has come from that omega is equal to theta by t, right? D omega is equal to d theta by dt. So from that theta is equal to omega into t. ओके हेलो सो हियर इट इज 1.5 सॉरी आई फर्स्ट टोल्ड थिकनेस एक्चुअली इट इज टाइम सो नाउ टेल मी व्हाट इज टॉर्क 3.54 वाटर मैटर हां इट इज ऑलमोस्ट कमिंग अबाउट 3454 राइट Three, four, five, four. Okay, so this is how you can calculate this uh, torque and energy absorbed in braking applications. So in block brake, as you can see, uh, the construction is like uh, this shown in this particular figure. So in that uh, we are having a lever on which block is mounted, which is going to resist the motion of that rotating drum, right? and in this uh, particular figure this free body diagram shows the various forces acting on a uh, different component right so uh, as you can see here the force acting is uh, this particular force right mu and that is the frictional force right and the distance or this is also this uh, frictional force this mu n right and the distance is this radius of this drum so in this case the braking torque is given by this frictional force into the distance which is this radius of this brake drum right and uh, this particular force this normal force is defined by 
the pressure acting on that normal force into the cross section which is this length into width right so this length and width of block is uh, uh, considered here in order to calculate the normal force and breaking torque is given by this uh, frictional force into the radius of the drum now there are two cases for this block break when this uh, the length of this or sorry the width of the block is short and width of the block is long it means if this block is going to subtend an angle which is less than 45 right if this angle is less than 45 then it is going to be considered as short block right so first if we go for this then uh, actually uh, when we are considering this uh, short block then it is also considered as that this is one fourth of this diameter of this brake drum right and uh, so width is going to lie between this uh, dimensions one fourth of the diameter of brake drum and the half of the diameter of brake drum so when width of block lies between this you can consider it as short block now in this if you see this forces if you see then it can be balanced by this rx which is in horizontal direction is being balanced by this frictional force right here this rx is balanced by this frictional force similarly we are having this vertical force ry which is going to be balanced by uh, this particular normal force right minus uh, this particular force p right so this is how you can have equilibrium of forces right so up to this it is clear yes or no yes sir right now if you take moment sigma of moment about point or this fulcrum point o or this pivot o is equal to zero then uh, the moment generated by the force p and this frictional force is in anti-clockwise direction right both this also and this also right while uh, the moment generated by this particular force n is in clockwise direction is it clear yes sir so if we consider this anti-clockwise moment as positive then p cross b plus this mu n cross a minus this n into sorry here mu n into c is there a is the distance for that uh, force n right so here mu n into c and n into a is equal to 0 so once uh, you have this equilibrium then from this particular equilibrium you can have this force p right which can be represented with this a minus mu c right divided by b into n right you can simplify this to this is it okay yes sir now uh, once you have this uh, particular uh, equation then you can have idea that in which particular condition you need to provide the external force in order to stop the drum right so if you see uh, this equation then you are having three different cases right here case one two and three let us see so first case is your this distance a is greater than this mu into c so if a is uh, greater than mu into c it means you need to provide some external force right external force in order to stop the drum right so uh, this is the case where external force is required right similarly when a is equal to mu c then you need not to provide any force right so the self locking condition start from this without providing any force uh, your this particular uh, drum is locked right it is not going to have any motion right similarly if a is less than mu c 
then also you will have this negative p right so it is also uncontrollable conditions right because uh, we have no control with the help of this external force applied on your uh, this particular block right so when this a is less than or equal to mu c it is not desirable condition right because there is no force uh, there is no role of this external force p in uh, this breaking uh, operation right so this is how for this simple short block break we are having this uh, condition for self locking now uh, one more important thing is here we have assumed that the rotation is clockwise right while uh, carrying out this analysis what we have assumed is this uh, clockwise rotation of drum right if it is anti clockwise right as it is mentioned in this uh, particular figure if we, right if it is anti clockwise then this force will be given by this a plus mu c upon b into n right so this again you can uh, derive by considering all this uh, forces acting and taking equilibrium of force in uh, forces and equilibrium of moment right so up to this uh, it is clear hello yes sir okay so once you have idea about this then you can go with the simple numerical like this uh, in which it is mentioned that a single block break with a torque capacity of 250 newton meter is shown in this figure the brake drum rotates at uh, 100 rpm and the coefficient of friction is 0.35 now calculate the actuating force and the hinge pin reaction for clockwise rotation of the drum okay then the actuating force and hinge pin reaction for anti clockwise rotation of the drum okay then the rate of heat generation during the breaking action right so uh, let us go for this particular calculation and i guess uh, some whole thing is there but i missed it so we will calculate up to this third point right so let us see how you are going to calculate this so can you try this one hello yes sir okay yeah yes sir <coughs> so first you need to calculate the uh, sorry first you need to note down the p1 data that is the torque is given as 250 newton meter and then n is 100 rpm mu is given as 0.35 then this pressure is mentioned as 1 newton per mm square so pressure is not mentioned in this but in the last point they have asked to find the dimension of block right and in that they have mentioned that this uh, pressure intensity is 1 newton per mm square right and the length of block is twice the width length of block is twice the width right so in the last point they have asked to find the dimension at the dimensions of the block yes so these are the given data So I guess first you need to draw this uh, free body diagram, right, for both the cases. 
clockwise and anti clockwise that if we go for this then here you are having this uh, this may be your frictional force and this is normal force similarly here also you will have this normal force and frictional force right so uh, here the force is applied at R Y and R X, you can consider like this. Correct? Is it correct? For clockwise yes, direction, you yes. will have yes, sir. forces acting, right? So once uh, you have. Uh, this uh, data with you, you can go for uh, taking moment about this uh, fulcrum. But before that, as you know, that this mt is given by this mu n into r. So from this first, you can calculate this n. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So what will be your n? Mt is given as uh, 250 Newton into mm if we convert then it is 250 by 10 raised to 3 250 into 10 raised to 3 mu is given as 0.35 and this radius is given as 200 so your n will be 3571.42 3571.42 Newton that will be your n now you can take a uh, moment about the hinge pin right this may be your hinge pin so you are given all the distances right so if you take moment about this hinge then your mu n is acting at a distance of 50 right is acting at a distance of 50 and it is anti-clockwise right here this is anti-clockwise for this P also anti-clockwise so P into 500 this can be equated to this N into 200 because N is producing clockwise is it correct? yes or no yes sir so this will give you the force p so what is p is it 1303.57 yes so this is coming as 1303.57 newton now once you have this uh, then you can calculate this Rx as mu n and Ry as n minus p. So you have mu, you have n, right? So what is this Rx? One thousand two fifty one. Okay is almost around this 1251 Newton similarly you have N and P so Ry will be 2267.8 right, so 2267.8 Newton almost so this will give you then reaction right Rx square plus Ry square so what will be this R
that is Two five eight nine point nine six. Two five eight nine point nine six Newton, right? So now, once you have calculated this, you can also calculate it for the uh, this anti-clockwise rotation, right? So for anti-clockwise rotation, I am not again uh, drawing the figure, but as you know, what is going to happen is this. Uh, friction is going to change the direction so it will be minus mu n into 50 right plus p into 500 will be equal to that n into 200 so this will again give you this p around 1553 57 newton right are you getting the same yes sir okay so once you have uh, this uh, particular uh, p then again you can calculate that uh, rx and ry rx is not going to change it will remain that 1251 or almost 1251 newton ry is going to change because uh, this p has changed right so it will come around uh, this 2017.86 newton almost so this will again give you that new reaction that is rx square plus ry square so it will be around 2373 almost so uh, are you getting the same yes okay now uh, these are the first two things right for clockwise rotation and anti-clockwise rotation you need to calculate this reactions so the next was uh, you need to calculate the heat generated right so uh, how can you calculate uh, the heat generated with that uh, frictional force into average velocity right that will give you that energy right so rate of heat generated is nothing but this frictional force into average velocity so uh, first you need to calculate the average uh, velocity right how you will calculate that average velocity pi and d by 16 sorry Pi and d by 60. Uh, oh, by 2 by 2. Actually, you need to consider that uh, both velocity, right? So, final velocity and initial velocity, and then you need to take average. Right? So, if you go for that average velocity, then it is initial plus final divide by 2 so basically that velocity is nothing but omega into r right so omega is 2 pi n by 60 into r whatever is given n is given as 100 and r is 0 0.2 correct yes sir Yes, sir. So from this 2.094 meter per second, correct? So it will come as 1.047 meter per second. So once you have this average velocity, then you need to simply put it here because this frictional force is mu n and this average velocity you have calculated. So it will give you this rate of heat generated. So what is it? One three one thousand three hundred eight point nine. This is almost uh, one thousand three hundred and eight newton meter per second, right? Or what? Whatever. The last is uh, the dimension of block. So here, if you go for this dimension.
so uh, what is this uh, dimensions of log how you are going to calculate this as you know this normal force is calculated with this right n is equal to p l w we have seen this right yes or no yes sir. so from this you know pressure is given as 1 l is given as 2 times ohm width right so here you can have this n is equal to 2 width square so you can calculate width from this because you know n so what is width 42.26 mm It is 42.26. You can consider it as 45 mm. So from this length will be 90, because length is two times width. Right. Now, whether uh, this block is self-locking or not, can any one of you check this? How will you check it first? Do you know? Self-locking. If P is coming negative, then self lock. That is correct. That is one way. But which parameter we have considered for moment? That is also uh, correct. But in the final equation of P, which parameter we are checking in order to decide whether brake is self locking or not? A minus A and mu. Yeah. So you need to check this A minus mu C. Is equal to what? E is two hundred mm. Mu is point three five. C is fifty. Right. So is equal to what? So it is not self-locking. It is not self-locking because here some positive number will come, right? So A by C is greater yes. than mu. So brake is not self-locking. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, sir, so does self-locking uh, signify self-energizing? No, 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 no. Self-energizing is totally different than self-locking. Self-energizing means your frictional force is helping uh, your this external effort in uh, stopping your drum. That is self-energizing. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. So now let us go further. Right. That is uh, this uh, particular this block with long shoe. right so in case of this uh, block with long shoe we cannot go for that uh, assumption that directly the, the that normal load is acting equally on the full block so that is why they have considered this particular small element this rd5 and for that this tn is being considered so in this long shoe break what you need to do is you need to consider this dn right as this pressure into that area previously we were directly uh, taking that l into w but here l will be the length of this arc which can be given by this rd5 because length of arc is uh, the radius into uh, theta so this uh, length into uh, still we need to consider the width as we were considering previously also right so for this uh, particular case of long shoe This dn is defined by this pressure into R d phi into W. Now, as this is uh, this normal force, then this frictional force will be defined as this mu dn, right? So that is mu R d phi this W into this pressure, right? Similarly, your this torque or braking torque is given by this mu n into R. So this will be this mu r square d phi w into this p. So this is how this m t can be represented as this mu r square w this p to d phi. Right. So this is how uh, this uh, breaking torque is defined in this uh, particular case with long shoe. Right. 
now if we consider uh, the wear in this uh, particular friction lining of this uh, kind of this long shoe brake then from this particular figure you can consider that as this is uh, delta y this is delta uh, this is delta phi, sorry this is phi only right and this is delta r so from this you can uh, write that this delta r is equal to delta y cos phi right so which gives you that delta y is equal to delta r upon cos phi so delta y and delta r is actually amount of wear across uh, the uh, this uh, delta r is across the radial direction delta y is this vertical wear so it is having this relation between them right now this delta r which is this wear along the radial direction is proportional to this uh, particular force mu dn right so if you uh, further uh, elaborate on this then this dn we have defined as mu r d phi into w this is area right into this pressure so uh, from this you can write that this delta r is actually proportional to p right so here uh, in place of delta r you can write p actually right so what it will give is this p by uh, this cos phi is equal to constant so from this and this relation what you can write is p by cos phi is equal to constant right now from uh, this if you take it further then this is p is equal to c1 cos phi right now for phi is equal to 0 it is maximum right p is equal to p maximum so it will give you c1 is equal to p max if you put this phi is equal to 0 then this equation can be modified as p is equal to p max cos phi right now what you can do is you can replace that p with p max cos phi in the equation of that normal course dn which we have uh, defined earlier so this dn can then be written as this r d phi into w which is area into this p max cos phi right so uh, this is further can be calculated by integrating this dn cos phi right so if you put the value of this dn and if you uh, give full uh, uh, if you further simplify by integrating it what you are going to get is i am not going for full integration i am directly writing that you will get this r w p max 4 theta plus 2 sin 2 theta right so actually further you can simplify this as 1 by 2 r w p max as this 2 theta plus sin 2 theta right now once you have calculated this n then if you are going to uh, put that p is equal to p max cos phi in the equation of your braking torque also then it can be mentioned is with this mu r square w p max this minus theta to plus theta your cos phi d phi right here also it is minus theta to plus theta only right one second so yeah if you uh, simplify this so if you simplify this uh, then again uh, you will uh, come up with this mu r square w p max into 2 sin theta now if you write it in terms of that n right that 1 by 2 r w p max into 2 theta plus sin 2 theta if you put this value uh, into this empty right or you simplify it to write it in terms of that n then what can you write is this mu n 
आर फोर साइन थीटा अपॉन टू थीटा प्लस साइन टू थीटा राइट सो फाइनली यू कैन राइट इट एज म्यू डैश एंड आर राइट म्यू डैश इज दिस इक्विवेलेंट कोफिशेंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन राइट विच कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड विद द मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस टर्म एंड दिस टर्म राइट सो दिस इज हाउ यू विल गेट दिस पर्टिकुलर म्यू डैश राइट वेन यू आर कंसिडरिंग लॉन्ग शू सो विद दिस पर्टिकुलर explanation about this long shoe then you can go to this band break right in band break actually uh, you are having this construction as mentioned here the load is applied uh, you will have this uh, a particular uh, band which is wrapping to drum so you will have a tight side and slack side as you know in this build drive we are having tight side and slack side so you will have this tight side and slack side right and if you draw the free body diagram of forces acting then there will there will be this kind of forces acting on this uh, particular lever as it is mentioned here right so in band break if you go for uh, this uh, equilibrium of forces right then uh, uh, and equilibrium of that moment then if you take moment about this particular point right or this hinge joint then you can write that this p2 into a because this is the distance and this is uh, the force right so this p2 into a is equal to this p into l right so uh, you can write this p in terms of this p2 a by l right and as you know in this belt drive this tension in tight side and slack side is represented with this relation p1 by p2 is equal to e raised to mu theta is it correct yes sir right so once uh, you have uh, this basic idea right then if you can see uh, the forces acting right in a particular portion of this d5 as it is mentioned here right so you can uh, come up with this dn again as this p into that r w d phi right as we have seen earlier also here also it is like this only right now if you go for uh, equilibrium of forces then this dn is opposed by this p into sin d phi by 2 right p into sin d phi by Two is acting here downward, right? Component. Similarly, here also a component acting downward as P plus D P sine D phi by two. So opposite to this D and these two components are acting. So from that we can write this D and is equal to P sine D phi by two plus this P plus D P sine D phi by as we know this d5 is very small this sin d5 by 2 itself uh, can be represented with this d5 by 2 only right and if you put this d5 by 2 into the above equation then your this dn can be presented as this p d5 by 2 plus p d5 by 2 we are neglecting this dp into d5 by 2 because it will be very small quantity right so here basically this is pd5 right so uh, from this uh, den is equal to this pd5 you can have your this particular pressure is equal to this force upon rw if you write this relation into the above equation of the den is equal to the pr Uh, w d phi, then you will find that this pressure is coming as this force upon this radius into width, right? So this is how you are having this uh, relation in ca case of this band break, right? So this is simple uh, band break, whatever uh, we have seen, right? There is one more type of band break that is this differential band break, right? So if you see this uh, differential band break. then in that case if you take moment about uh, this fulcrum 
then you will have this P into L which is having this clockwise movement similarly at this P1 into B it is also having clockwise movement right and this P2 will be having uh, anti-clockwise movement so one of them can be positive and negative right so if you take anti-clockwise positive then clockwise negative and if you take clockwise positive then anti-clockwise negative right so from this uh, you can write your this effort which is required can be given by this p2a minus p1b divided by l now here also if you further simplify it then you know that p1 is given as p2 e raised to mu theta so if you take this p2a minus p1 as p2 e raised to mu theta right then it will give you this p2 a minus p e raised to mu theta divided by l right so this is how this uh, braking effort is calculated in this differential band break so here also if uh, someone asks you to write the condition for self locking then can anyone tell what will be the condition for self locking a equal to b e to the power mu theta sorry a equal to b mu theta right so this a equal to b e raised to mu theta or actually uh, in order to avoid uh, this particular condition your a should be greater than this b e raised to mu theta right so if in case this a by b is less than or equal to e raised to mu theta then self locking is there is it correct yes or no no sir it is not self locking sir aapne bataya tha ki a agar chhota ho jayega to matlab issue ho jayega na fir non controllable ho jayega yeah so that is self locking that is what i am telling if this a by b is less than or equal to this e raised to mu theta then there will be self locking because then your p will be coming negative na so in order to avoid this self locking this a by b should be greater than e raised to mu theta are you getting what i am saying yes sir yes sir correct so basically this a needs to be greater than b e raised to mu theta in order to avoid self locking yes or no sir in the previous case you told that a equal to mu c is the condition for the self locking yeah it means it is whether it is uh, uh, equal to or less than than. in both case it will be self locking uncontrollable also if p is going negative but basically the desirable condition is a should be greater than e raised to mu theta in that case uh, the operator needs to be uh, needs to provide a certain amount of effort in order to apply the brake right okay sir so the desirable condition is this a must be greater than this b e raised to mu theta then only certain amount of effort is required in order to stop the drum which is rotating correct are you getting yes sir right so after this idea you can try this one sir uh, yes can we go to previous uh, slide here delta del r and del y came into picture i guess uh, here only ha huh? uh, what is del r and what is del del y it is basically wear as it is mentioned here this is uh, wear right which is taking place uh, because of uh, this force is acting in this uh, particular brake shoe right so this delta y is the in vertical direction and delta r is along the radial direction means uh, it is a wear wear particle or wear layer 
it is wearing means uh, that particle will uh, come off or torn off from that particular uh, breaking surface uh, sorry from that frictional surface which is providing the breaking action okay means uh, it is having thickness del r and uh, ah, del y ah. it's vertical. which is which is uh, which is getting worn out right we are assuming okay. that uh -huh. and phi sir phi is phi. this angle as here we have considered and uh, the whether this is a short break or a long this is long break only as we have i guess already considered here right we are cons talking about long break only means long shoe only right block okay yes. huh. so that's why we are integrating with respect to d pi yes 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 okay sir. okay so minus theta to theta we are integrating right Okay. So okay. now if we go for this numerical I guess you will be able to solve this. Let us go quickly. That a differential band break is shown in this figure. Now the width and thickness of the steel band are 100 mm and 3 mm respectively and the maximum tensile stress in the band is 50 Newton per mm square. The coefficient of friction between the friction lining and the break drum is 0.25 calculate the tension in the band actuating force and the torque capacity of the brake and find out whether the brake is self locking you can try this one right yes or no yes sir yeah it is simple sir, i mean that the maximum tensile stress is this is allowable or this is present in the present situation uh, maximum tensile stress in the bend it is I guess uh, which is present I guess right because it is mentioned that it is uh, there so maximum tensile stress in the bend is uh, 50 Newton per mm square so it is actually the present tension okay okay yeah so which will allow you to calculate the force because stress is provided and you have area with you okay yes sir so if you first note down the given data then uh, the width is 100 mm thickness is 3 mm and the mu is 0.25 sigma t is 50 newton per mm square r is 300 mm Yeah, so from this first you can calculate uh, the P1, right? the tension in the this band which is given with this stress into area, W into T. So straight away you can calculate this 50 into 100 into 3. Yes, correct? Yes, sir, 15,000 Newton. 15,000 Newton. So once you have this, you can calculate P2 is equal to P1 upon E raised to mu theta. Now theta you need to convert into radian, right, by multiplying it with pi by 180. So this is basically this 15,000 divided by this E raised to mu is given as 0 0.25 into theta is uh, pi by 180 into 240 which is the angle of wrap given right so now this P2 will be what 5292.87 Newton 5292.87 263 Actually, it is coming 263 only. 5263 only, right? 
इट इज ऑलमोस्ट फाइव टू सिक्स थ्री न्यूटन राइट आई गेस टू पॉइंट सेवन वन एट और इन दैट सम कैलकुलेशन मे बी वेरी राइट सो ऑल ऑफ यू ऑलमोस्ट आर गेटिंग दिस फाइव टू सिक्स थ्री ओके दैट इज ओके राइट नाउ एक्चुएटिंग फोर्स यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट बाई अप्लाइंग दैट इक्विलिब्रियम ऑफ मोमेंट so if we apply that equilibrium of moment about this particular fulcrum then what is uh, that this p1 into 50 right so this p1 into 50 plus this p into 950 right because this both will have positive right yeah this will have this uh, clockwise here this will have this clockwise moment and then this will be negative right anti clockwise so this will be p2 into 200 is equal to 0 right so if you go for this then you will find p is equal to you have the values of p1 and p2 so you can calculate this p Yes, sir. Three hundred eighteen point seven newton. Ah, uh, okay. It is almost three hundred eighteen point seven newton. So now, once you have this, then torque capacity can be calculated in this uh, band break. Is here breaking torque is given by this P one minus P two into R. So this also can be calculated. You have all the data with you. So can anyone tell me quickly? Twenty-nine left, twenty-one thousand hundred newton mm. Two nine two one point one newton meter almost. Now, finally, self-locking condition. Whether the brake is self-locking or not, we need to calculate A by B and E raised to V theta. So, for self-locking. A by B must be less than or equal to e raised to mu theta. So calculate both. What is A by B and what is e raised to mu theta? So since value of uh, P we have calculated is positive, so it is not self-locking. Correct. That is also a correct interpretation. Yes, the brake is not self-locking. But still, you can show this value here also. What is what are these values? A by B and E raised to mu theta. A by B is four, right? Yes, sir. And E raised to mu theta is. Ah, uh, two point eight five. Eight five almost right. Okay, so this is how. Uh, we have answered this. What they have asked. So up to here, it is clear. Yes, sir. So if we go for the next one, then let us see some of the questions from gate. So, in a bend break, the ratio of tight side and uh, tension to the slack side of the uh, tension is three. P1 by P2 is 3. The angle of rep on the band drum is 180. So whatever angle you need to convert it into radian, right? So pi by 180. Now the coefficient of friction between the drum. You need to calculate this. So it can be done, right? So what is point three five? Point three five. Okay, let me check. Yes, every one of you are getting this point three five. Yes, sir. Okay, because it is simple, right? This uh, P one by P two is equal to E raised to mu theta. This three is equal to E raised to mu into five. Right. So basically, this uh, yes. 
better to go with at least understanding uh, how that uh, particular formula has uh, come up right so if you okay. see the derivation then it can help you if you have time right because it may happen that if you remember all those uh, equations sometimes uh, you may not be confident that whatever you are writing is correct or not so in that case you can verify whatever you are writing is correct or not by deriving then and that itself okay Okay. Yeah. So this ln three is equal to mu pi will give you this mu is equal to almost point three five. Right. So uh, after this, uh, let us go to this one now. In this, a band break consists of a lever attached to one end of the band. The other end of the band is fixed to. the ground the wheel has a radius of 200 mm and the wrap angle of the band is 270 degree the braking force applied to the lever is limited to 100 newton and the coefficient of friction between the band and the wheel is 0.5 no other information is provided okay then the maximum tension that can generate the band during the that can be generated in the band during the braking and the maximum wheel torque that can be completely break is so can you try this particular question hello yes sir yeah so here this uh, theta is given as 270 degree mu is given as 0.5 yes. so here please mute yourself So here, if you uh, sir, in sorry, question is solved. Sir, in equation of uh, self locking, what is A and uh, what which side to take B? So in self locking, actually. Ha huh. then uh this particular distance in this differential angle yeah as you can see now here in this this tight side is given as this uh, a and slack side is given as b correct No tight slide is uh, B na. Sorry. Tight side is B na. Tight side is B. Yeah, yes. And then slack side is this A. Correct. Right. Yes. Now you can go here. Yeah. So the maximum tension. Sir, in which direction is the drum moving, sir? they have not uh, provided us uh, any information so in that case uh, what you can do is you can assume that 
it is moving in uh, this direction only right so sir the answer can be either 18.95 or 2110 so 2110 is the correct answer right because if you take uh, this moment about this particular point right or hinge right then what will happen is in this uh, tight side if this force is acting in this direction then this t into 1 will be equated to this 100 into 2 right which will give you this t as 200 newton correct yes sir right so and after that if you apply this t1 by t2 is equal to e raised to mu theta right where mu is 0.5 and theta is given as 270 which is 3 pi by 2 so e raised to 0.5 into 3 pi by 2 right so your uh, this is t2 actually right then you will find your t1 in that case i guess this direction needs to be assumed this way so this t1 you are getting as 2110 newton correct Yes, sir. So once you have this, then breaking torque. Just now we have discussed how you are calculating Break, yeah. breaking torque in case of this band break. T one minus T two into R. Three eighty two. Three eighty two. Yes. Is T1 minus T2 into R, right? If you put all the value, R is given as 0.2. So if you put all the values, it will come around 382 newton. Okay. So now, if you go for the next one, then here a block break uh, shown below has width face width of 300 mm. Mean coefficient of friction is 0.25. For an uh, activating force of 400 newton, the breaking torque in newton meter. So, can you try this one? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, please go ahead and try. You can take moment about A, right? In order to find the N. Forty-five. Yeah, forty-five is the correct answer. But the first you need to show that the sigma of moment about A is equal to zero, right? Since you are considering this point as A, it is fulcrum point. So in that case, sir, for which angle of contact, just to exceed, करेगा तो वो long shoe माना जाएगा? Uh, you need to go for greater than forty five. Here it is provided exactly forty five, right? So we are not going for that uh, particular uh, calculation of that mu dash, right? Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sir, is it like applicable? Sorry, forty five degree. No, no. Is it forty-five degree? We can go with uh, that short only. Okay. Okay. So this n into two hundred, right? Where n is going to be applied at this point, right? So this n into two hundred can be equated with this four hundred into six hundred, right? so from this you can first calculate n so it will be around 1200 newton so once you have this then frictional force can be mu into n so mu is given as 0.25 into 1200 will be 300 newton so once you have frictional force then breaking torque will be this frictional force into radius Radius is uh, given as 150 mm. 
so this 300 into point one five will give you 45 newton meter is it correct yes sir so now if you go to the next one then a force of 400 newton is applied to the brake drum of 0.5 meter diameter in a band brake system as shown in the figure now where the ripping angle is 180 degree the coefficient of friction between the drum and the band is 0.25 the braking torque applied in newton meter so can you calculate this hello yes. So what, yes, you, what you need to do is, you need to calculate T1 and T2, right? So T1 is provided as 400 Newton, right? Because here you will have this T1, right? Which is equal to this 400 Newton. So here you will have then this T2, right? But you calculate T2 from the T1 by T2 is equal to e raised to mu theta. Theta is pi only, right? Mu is given as 0.25. T1 is there, so you can directly calculate T2. What is T2? Four sir, B sir. 0.25 to pi. What is T2? 189 कुछ है तो 182.182.65 almost okay then what is this torque 54.54 yeah so this M T is equal to T1 minus T2 into R R is given as 0.5 meter by 2, right? That is 0.25. So it is 0.25. You have calculated T1 and T2, right? If you put all this value, then MT will come as 54.4. Now, the next is a drum brake is shown in the figure the drum is rotating in anti clockwise direction the coefficient of friction between drum and shoe is 0.2 the dimensions shown in the figure are in mm the braking torque in newton meter for the brake shoe is so here also you can calculate so here also if you take moment about this uh, fulcrum then you will first find uh, this uh, relation between this frictional force and Rn, right? Because you don't know friction force as well as that normal force both, right? So here it is, this Rn, and this will be a new Rn. See here this frictional force is considered uh, as acting on this uh, particular block right because you may have that confusion that this uh, wheel is moving in this direction and frictional force is also in this direction actually if this wheel is moving in this direction then this block is assumed to is moving in the opposite direction and then this frictional force is moving opposite to that so it is clear to you right yes yeah so this rn and mu rn having this direction you can take uh, this sigma moment about this o is equal to zero so uh, this thousand into 800 will generate this uh, anti-clockwise right and this both will have clockwise mu rn as well as this rn both will have clockwise so this mu rn into 
hundred, right? Yes. Sir. Plus this R N into four uh, eighty, right? Correct. So this will <coughs> give you relation between this uh, frictional force and R N. So, mu r n into 100 will be minus, no, sir? No, no, mu r n into 100 is also plus because I have changed the direction, means uh, taken both the force in the opposite side of this uh, anti clockwise moment. So, I have equated this anti clockwise moment to oh, both this clockwise moment. Are you getting? Hmm? Hello? Are you getting this? Hello? Uh, no sir, mu r in and uh, thousand will cause the moment in anti-clockwise, no sir? No, this mu r n is causing in clockwise, no? it is in this direction. So it is causing this clockwise, this n is causing anti-clockwise. Ah, okay, okay. So Again, this huh, r n is causing clockwise. So I have equated anti-clockwise to clockwise. Right. So I guess from this you can calculate R n because you have mu with you, right? Sixteen hundred, sir. Sixteen hundred newton. So once you have this R n, you can calculate frictional force mu R n is equal to what? Point two into this, right? Because mu is point two, so it is three twenty newton. Correct. Yes. yes sir. And then breaking torque will be equal to this frictional force into drum radius. So drum radius is again two hundred mm means point two meter. So three twenty into point two. So you will have sixty four newton meter. Sixty four. Right, because this is point two. FF you have already calculated. So sixty four. Correct? Yes sir. Yes. So now, now let us go for this. A single block brake with a short shoe and uh, torque capacity of 250 Newton meter is shown. The cylindrical brake drum rotates anti-clockwise at 100 RPM and the coefficient of friction is 0.25. The value of A in mm. Let's such that the maximum actuating load is 2000. You can calculate this, I guess, to simply. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So quickly calculate this. See, this uh, braking torque is given, right? So this is nothing but this frictional force into this radius. Correct? So this 250 can be fitted to this 0.25 into R n into A. Right. And now if you take uh, the equilibrium of uh, this particular forces sorry, if you take equilibrium of moment about this particular fulcrum O then what are the forces acting? This is having anti-clockwise motion, right? It is mentioned here, anti-clockwise. So, here also, both of these forces, as in previous case, this mu R n, as well as this R n, both will have clockwise, and this P will have anti-clockwise. So, this P into 2.5 A can be equated to this mu R n into A by 4 
plus this Rn into A. Yes or no? Yes. So from this, uh, you can calculate, I guess, because here you are having Rn in terms of A, right? I guess Rn is thousand by A. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. So you can put this Rn in terms of thousand by A, and then you can simplify in order to get P. Actually, P is provided, right? Anyway, so you need to calculate the distance. Actually, A. Sorry. Yes, P is two thousand here. Sorry, P is two thousand given. So if so I write P is two thousand. Actually, let me write P is two thousand. Two one two point five zero. One second. Two thousand into two point five into A. Mu is what? Point two five. R n is thousand by A. So thousand by four here, and here directly thousand. Right. If you solve this, you will find A. So what is A? A is two one two point five zero. Yeah, it is two one two. Point All of you are getting this? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Now, uh, yes. Next is a short shoe. Uh, external brake is shown in the figure. Diameter of the brake drum is 500. A is this. B is C is this. Coefficient of friction. All of the things are provided, right? The drum is rotating anti-clockwise, taking drum. I guess you can do this, right? It is simple only, right? Thanks. All the data are provided, right? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. So you can first take this moment about O equals to zero, right? So here uh, again, this mu n and n will have this direction, right? So uh, you can have this. F into A is equal to. Now, actually, in this case, this mu n will help this uh, breaking torque, right? Because it is this uh, particular uh, anti-clockwise, and here also it will come anti-clockwise because fulcrum is below this uh, particular block or this frictional force. Okay, are you getting what I am saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here it is plus mu n into a, right? Mu n into a equals to n into b, right? You are having all the data with you, so you can calculate n. F is given as hundred, a is given as thousand. So mu n into c will be what? Mu is thirty point thirty five into n. Into a is sorry, yeah. Here it will That's be. Yeah, I know. You went into c. Yes, 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 yes. Correct. Yes, point three five into n into c, which is two hundred, equals to n into b. That is five hundred. So this will give you n. What is n? Two thirty-two point five six. Yeah, it is almost two thirty-two point five six newton. So once you have n, you can calculate the breaking torque as mu n into this radius of drum. Right, this breaking torque m t can be this mu n into r. You have mu point three five n. You have calculated r is given as two uh, fifty mm because diameter is five hundred. So breaking torque is twenty point three three nine. It is almost twenty point three five newton meter. 
right 20.35 so all of you are getting this yes sir okay then if we go for the last one here a short shoe drum brake is shown in the figure a force of 1 kN is applied to the lever the coefficient of friction is 0.4 now the magnitude of the torque applied by the brake is again you can take the moment about fulcrum right this fulcrum pull so it is very simple here the direction is clockwise right so your mu rn will be in this direction rn will be in this direction so if you take moment about o then this uh, particular 1000 newton into 1000 right distance is 1000 this is generating this clockwise right then uh, this particular mu rn will be anti clockwise similarly uh, this rn is also anti clockwise so this can both be taken on the other side right so what is uh, mu mu is given as 0.4 right so mu is 0.4 rn into uh, this distance is given as uh -huh, directly not given right it is given as this radius and this 310 so it this distance is given as 310 minus 260 correct yes sir right so this 310 minus 260 plus uh, this rn into 500 right if you solve this you will find rn correct 1923 yeah, it is almost around 1923 newton so once you have this rn you can calculate frictional force as mu rn so what is that mu is given as 0.4 So what is FR for what whatever this frictional force FF? What is this? Seven sixty nine point sixty one. Seven sixty nine point sixty one newton almost. Sixty one. So this MT breaking torque is two hundred FF into radius of the drum. So it is almost coming around 200 newton meter, right? So this 200 will be your answer, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. So today we are yes. keeping it up to here.